Maybe we didn't give it enough fertilizer. Maybe we didn't get enough water. Maybe the plant was stressed at some point in his life and that's why it didn't grow to its full potential. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having an awesome day. We finally got some rain the last two days. Two pretty good showers each day there. We've got a break in the rain today, just kind of cloudy and breezy, and then the next two days we're getting more rain. So this break today, we need to take advantage of that, get a few things done in the garden. As you can see behind me, we've got our sweet corn that's tasseling out. We've got tassels, we've got silks on it. So it's getting pollinated right now. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that and kind of the height that we're seeing on the solstice sweet corn. Then we need to skip on over to the other side of the barn Check on our glass gem corn, probably need to go ahead and side dress that. And then later in the video, we're going to have another installment of Laugh at Trav while he tries to grow giant pumpkins. So let's start off with our solstice sweet corn here. You can see we've got lots of nice tassels there, the male part of the plant. And we've also got some silks forming down here, the female part of the plant. Now. These stalks that have tassels on them, these are about 75 to 80 days old. And we did have to replant some of this. So we have some in there in the middle that may tassel out sooner than that. They were replanted about, I don't know, a week or two after this first round here because we got a heavy rain, washed some of the seeds away. So we got some uneven height in there, but our plants are looking pretty good so far. They haven't ever been stressed. Haven't seen any of the leaves curling on them. Got a good color on them. So I'm pretty hopeful that we're gonna get a good harvest here. Now, although the plants do look healthy and everything has been timely as far as the tassel and the silk development for good pollination, the height of these plants does worry me a little bit. These plants are shorter than what I normally see with sweet corn. And they probably look a little shorter on camera than they actually are because there's kind of a hill or a hump right here and then the land kind of drops off that ways. And also we have them healed up pretty tall right there. So they look a little shorter than they actually are. But if I stand on the level ground kind of beside where the corn was healed, we can see that they're not too terribly short. I'm a little over six foot tall. And we'll see most of these Plants have topped out somewhere between, you know, five, five and a half foot tall, maybe a hair bit taller than that. Now, usually we think that corn tasseling out at shorter heights means that we did something wrong. Maybe we didn't give it enough fertilizer. Maybe we didn't get enough water. Maybe the plant was stressed at some point in his life and that's why it didn't grow to its full potential. I'm not sure that's what happened in this case though. Now I've never grown this solstice variety here and I haven't looked online to see what the average plant height is or anything. But I do know that some sweet corn varieties are just genetically shorter than others. I haven't grown a lot of peaches and cream corn, but I've grown it a few times. It seemed like every time I grew peaches and cream, it was always shorter compared to some other sweet corn varieties I've grown. That Yellowstone I grew last year got pretty tall. So it could be a variety thing, but I think in this case, it could also have something to do with the hotter than normal weather we've been having. So I was looking around online and doing some research, trying to find out what can cause corn to tassel earlier, what can cause the plants to be shorter. And most of the stuff I found talked about getting a cool spell after the corn was up and growing. They said that can stunt the plants, but that's not what happened with us here. It's been far from cool it's been hotter than normal here so in this case i think there was just so much heat so much humidity that the heat units were just cranked up and it caused it to mature a little faster than it normally would so was there anything we could have done about it i don't know probably not maybe we could have planted it a couple weeks earlier if we wouldn't have had our chicken tractor on here and maybe it would have got a little taller then because it would have had a little more moderate weather as opposed to this real hot weather we've had lately but i think we're going to do okay even though this corn is not six seven eight foot tall like some of the sweet corn we've grown in the past the silks are looking good i think everything's getting pollinated well and i think we're going to be all right so if your sweet corn plants end up being short, maybe it was something you did. Maybe you weren't timely with the fertilizer or the water. But if the plants look healthy throughout the duration of the grow out, it probably was nothing you did. It probably was a variety thing 
or just the weather wasn't cooperating. In our case, I'm blaming it on the weather. I have seen lots of other corn in our area that is short as well, a lot shorter than this right here. I've seen some pitiful looking corn and I think it just has to do with this hotter than normal May we had. And while we're out here, let's do just a little quick recap on corn pollination for those of you who may be new to growing corn. So like I told you earlier, we've got the male part of the plant up here, what we call the tassel. That's where the pollen is. And then we have the female part of the plant down here. That's where the silks are. Each one of those little hairs or threads on that bundle of silks there represents a kernel that could develop on that ear corn. We zoom in real close here, we can see that pollen right there on that corn leaf. So as you can tell by looking at that, there's way more pollen up here than we need to fertilize all those silks right there. And when we've got corn planted in a decent sized block like this, and we're getting plenty of wind like we have today in the last couple of days, it does a pretty good job of pollinating itself. We don't really have to come in here and help it at all. But if you're growing corn on a small scale, maybe in a raised bed or a tiny little plot in your backyard, and you just have a few plants, you definitely want to help the corn out a little bit. And so what you do, once it starts forming pollen like this, just come in here, and kind of shake that tassel there and you'll see that pollen flying everywhere just shake it enough so that some of that pollen falls down on those silks there and you will end up getting a nice full ear of corn and now that we're starting to see those silks appearing we know we're going to be getting some ears soon that's when we really want to be focused on taking care of those corn earworms and that's when we want to be spraying some of this spinosad this organic corn earworm treatment here now what do you do in a situation like we're dealing with this week where we've got silks appearing we need to be spraying but we've had so much rain this week well you just kind of do the best you can so like I said we had rain on Monday and Tuesday of this week Wednesday today looks like no rain we'll get some more rain Thursday and Friday and then we should have a break so you know just come in there when you can I'm going to spray this afternoon yeah it may get washed off Thursday and Friday but at least I'll get it treated you know as we're getting the silk starting to appear and then if we get really hard rain thursday and friday i may come in and spray again this weekend so just do the best you can yes yeah, some of it might wash away and you might have to treat it again but it's better than having worms all in your corn so if you get a little bit of a break especially late in the evening go ahead and treat if you have to treat again it's okay just try to get that spinosad on them corn silks so you don't have any worm issues so now let's check on this glass gem corn right behind me. Now unlike the sweet corn, we didn't have to replant this. We planted it one time, it all came up wonderfully. That's why we've got some nice even plant height along the rows there. We did come in here several weeks ago and thin this out to one plant every eight to 10 inches or so. So we got it thinned out, give it a little more room. And this stuff is looking really, really good. I have had to cultivate between the rows a couple times. With the wheel hoe, we're getting some pigweed in there. Probably has a lot to do with the chicken manure that was put down there in the fall and winter months when we were grazing this plot with the chickens. All that high nitrogen there can tend to foster some pigweed. But we've been keeping it under control somewhat. We've got some weeds popping up there in between the plants along the row. We need to take care of those today. I should have came out here and healed these probably earlier this week or this past weekend but it kept looking like it was going to rain then it started raining and thankfully this plot here drains pretty well and so we can get in there today even though we got some rain yesterday and we should be able to heal it up with the wheel hoe as opposed to the rake because it's only i'd say 18 inches tall or so so just like we did with the sweet corn, we're going to side dress with some Nature Safe 1300 and then we're going to heal those corn plants. That's going to cover this fertilizer, suppress those weeds along the row there, and give some stability to our corn stalks in case we get some high winds. Now if this glass gem corn is anything like our sweet corn, this should be the only side dressing we have to do. In the past, I have side dressed corn twice once when it was about this tall and then again when it was about knee high but since we have that addition from the chicken manure from the grazing in this plot and the sweet corn plot it seems like i can eliminate one of those fertilizations and just side dress one time 
So we're gonna sprinkle this alongside the plants and then we're gonna give Mr. Rake a break today and do this the easy way with the wheel hook. All right, all right, all right. Got that looking nice and spiffy. My fertilizer band was a little outside of what those plows could reach, so I didn't get quite all the fertilizer covered, but I think it'll be all right. I still think it's close enough to feed those plants, and that stuff doesn't wash away bad at all. Once it gets wet, it's kind of like alfalfa pellets, and it swells up, and it usually stays in place. So even though some of it is not right up next to the plant, it still should feed them pretty well. All right, so now let's jump over this corn plot right over there and y'all can laugh at my techniques for growing giant pumpkins so over here in our pumpkin patch let's start on this end and then we'll work our way over there to what will hopefully become giants at some point so we got our jade knight pumpkins in here these kabocha types and I'm starting to get some pretty good size on those they haven't turned yet they should turn a color green light green blue something like that so they haven't turned yet, but we'll get some good size on them. And just by rough estimation, looks like we'll get at least 20 to 30 nice pumpkins out of this 30 foot row from this Jade Knight variety. Then we got our fairy tale pumpkins over here, which probably aren't gonna be as productive as those are. That's just my general expectations. This being more of an heirloom, that being a hybrid variety. But we're getting some good size on a few of these. See if we can find one here. There we go. That's a pretty good sized pumpkin right there. That's about a foot in diameter. So we'll have some nice ones in there if we get, I don't know, 10 or 15 of those. I'll be tickled. We might get more than that though. And then we've got our giant pumpkins here, which don't look near as thick as they did before this past weekend when I got in here and pruned them up pretty good. Now when we did some giant pumpkin pruning, several videos ago after that video aired my giant pumpkin growing coach told me that I pruned them a little too aggressively and I kind of figured I might have done that so I was supposed to leave more of the main stems out there and I didn't with those three we pruned on that video I just had kind of one main stem going to where our pumpkin was so when I pruned the other two or three plants in this plot this weekend I left more of those main stems out there so hopefully those do a lot better we'll see in the long run the size difference between the ones I prune really aggressively and the ones I prune like we're supposed to and I realize I'm trying to grow way too many giant pumpkins in this little spot right here some people have told me that they dedicate a thousand square foot of space per giant pumpkin and we're definitely not giving each plant that much space but we're going to do the best we can with this little sliver we have here that's about i'd say 30 by 15 30 by 20 something like that so we've got two different types in here we have this guy here which is an atlantic giant and these are the ones that are supposed to get close to a thousand pounds or bigger. We don't know how big these are gonna get, but we shall see. But they can get up on around a thousand pounds or so. And these kind of have the pale pinkish color to them. Now these are what they call field pumpkins. And from my understanding, these are what end up looking just kind of like a real big jack-o'-lantern. And so these are supposed to top out around 200 pounds or so. I think the world record is around 211 or so. I don't know if we'll get to 200 pounds. We'll see how big we get. But anyway, these are not expected to get near as big as these are. Now, one thing I did do right that my pumpkin coach told me to do was to bury these vines. So for this one right here, this field pumpkin, you can see we buried the vines there so they can form roots and obtain moisture from that soil, which was pretty dry before we had some rain. But now it's able to get some moisture there all along where that vine is sitting in the ground. These others that I pruned this past weekend, I need to get in here and cover those with soil. Some of them are rooted down, but we'd like to see them rooted kind of where every branch comes out there along that vine. So we'll need to cover those with soil pretty soon. 
Now in addition to pruning the pumpkins, burying those vines, giving them plenty of water, which we can do with the drip system, and also fertilizing them heavily, another thing we gotta do is get these pumpkins off the ground, or at least that's what my coach says. And we need to do that so if the case the soil gets really wet, the pumpkins won't rot sitting on the ground, but it's also gonna make it easier to get these pumpkins out of here whenever they do reach their maximum size. Now ideally, you'd wanna put these on a pallet, I don't have access to six pallets and I don't think I could fit six pallets in here anyway. So I kind of had to just come up with something based on what I had out in the barn. So here's where y'all get to laugh at me and my makeshift pallets here. So I had some old scrap pieces of treated plywood under the barn from when we made our chicken tractor. And I've got plenty of bricks. I did go buy a piece of foam and kind of cut it to fit that piece of plywood. I figured, huh, maybe give them a little more cushion there than just sitting on the wood. But I took the bricks, the foam, and the plywood there and made me a little stand to get them off the ground a little bit. So that's a field pumpkin that's, I don't know, probably 10 or so pounds. It's growing pretty fast. And then the other one I did would be this Atlantic Giant over here and this board probably isn't big enough i may have to get another board because i think it's going to outgrow this board here especially if it gets on up you know between 500 and 1000 pounds but at least we got it off the ground for the time being we may have to adjust and put a bigger board there in the next couple of weeks so here's my thought process and this may be completely flawed but this is what i'm thinking if i can just get those pumpkins off the ground a little bit and get a little space underneath that board there my wife's uncle's got a tractor with a bucket on the front of it i can run some toe straps underneath that board there wrap them around that pumpkin and we can get this thing picked up and put in the back of the truck or wherever we need to go to go weigh it now these field pumpkins at 200 pounds i think i can pick up one of those i don't think i can pick up a 500 or a thousand pound pumpkin in fact i know i can't but the 200 pounds i might can get those picked up by myself the other ones we're going to have to use a tractor i believe so let me take you through and show you all six of these because we got one that i don't think is going to make it so we got this atlantic giant i showed you it's on the little pedestal there we did prune this one correctly so we got a long trailing vine coming off that one there we need to bury that vine this field pumpkin here we pruned too aggressively we only got one main vine on it so we'll just see where it tops out at now this one over here, this Atlantic Giant, I also pruned this one too aggressively and may have watered this one too aggressively. You can see that puppy right there doesn't split. Now will that kind of heal over and keep growing? I doubt it, but I'm gonna leave it here just to see what happens. It's split on the top there and on the side. I guess it might've got just too much water. And then for the other three, we've got that field pumpkin that's on a pedestal. That one was pruned correctly. This one here was pruned too aggressively. So hoping that one should get bigger than this one eventually. And then I think my biggest Atlantic giant would be this puppy right here, which is kind of sitting on the edge of those fairy tale pumpkins i did kind of move some of those fairy tale vines out of the way to be able to prune this one we did prune this one correctly and we've got some nice long trailing vines coming off that guy so now besides getting the rest of those up off the ground all we're really doing is training that new vine growth to stay in this plot here to so it doesn't run out the plot and get chopped with the lawnmower. We're also cutting any new blooms off the end of those vines, any of the tertiary stems or vines or whatever you wanna call them, cutting those off as well. Obviously wanna give them plenty of water, not too much, and keep fertilizing them heavily. I've been mixing up some AgriThrive, mixing up some of that Prevagenics that Heavenly Hills Homestead sent us, and I've been pouring it right where the base of the plant sits, but I've also been pouring some where those vines are buried and they have roots, you know, kind of anchored down so that we kind of feed the entire plant there. So we'll continue to give you guys updates on this situation here probably every couple weeks as these pumpkins grow and grow and grow. It's crazy how fast they grow. And hopefully we don't have any more split and try to explode on us like that one over there. And what are we gonna do with a 500 plus pound pumpkin if we are able to grow one? 
I don't know. We'll probably at least put it in the back of the truck, ride around town, show it off as if we killed an 18 point deer. And then who knows? I've seen some cool ideas online. I've seen this one guy who took one of the giant pumpkins, hollered it out, and made a little boat out of it. So we might go catch us a mess of brim in one of our giant pumpkins. We'll find something fun to do with it or maybe multiple fun things to do with it. So I hope you enjoyed the video today and hopefully in just a few weeks we'll have some delicious sweet corn to try. I can't wait to try this solstice variety and see if it's all it's cracked up to be. And I gotta go ahead and kinda block off a whole day on my schedule for putting up sweet corn between harvesting, shucking, silking, cutting it off the cob, cooking a little bit, freezing it. It takes a whole day to do a plot like that, especially when it's just me in Brooklyn doing it. So I need to go ahead and kind of designate a day in the future where we can get all that done and we'll be glad to show you guys when we do it and tell you how much we like that variety and if you're an experienced sweet corn grower let me know what you think about sweet corn height what makes it tassel out at shorter heights is it mainly just a variety thing in your opinion or is it weather related when you see short sweet corn what do you think causes it if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to check out our affiliate links below. A lot of great companies that we use in our gardens here at Lazy Dog Farm. Also, go check out our website, lazydogfarm.com, where we've got Lazy Dog Farm shirts, hats, recipes, recommended products, our garden blog, all kind of good stuff over there. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh. Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.